Long-term dependency problem is a challenge that arises in vanilla recurrent neural network when the network has to remember information from earlier time steps to make accurate predictions. Vanilla RNNs have a hidden state that captures information from previous time steps, but as the time lag increases, the network tends to lose track of the relevant information, which leads to degraded performance. For example, consider a recurrent model trying to predict the next word based on the previous ones. If we are trying to predict the last word in the clouds or in the sky, we don't need any further context. It's pretty obvious the next word is going to be sky. In such cases, where the gap between the relevant information and the place that it's needed is small, RNNs can learn to use the past information. But there are also cases where we need more context. Consider trying to predict the last word in the text I grew up in Egypt. I speak fluent Arabic. Recent information suggests that the next word is probably the name of a language. But if we want to narrow down which language, we need the context of Egypt from further back. It's entirely possible for the gap between the relevant information and the point where it is needed to become very large. Unfortunately, as that gap grows, vanilla recurrent network become unable to learn to connect the information. Long short-term memory networks, usually just called LSTMs, are a special kind of recurrent neural network that is specifically designed to handle sequential data. The LSTM model addresses the issue of vanishing gradients in traditional recurrent neural networks by introducing memory cells and gates to control the flow of information and a unique architecture. Long short-term memory is widely used in deep learning because it captures long-term dependencies in sequential data. This makes them well-suited for tasks such as speech recognition, language translation, and time series forecasting, where the context of earlier data points can influence later ones. Long short-term memory neural networks utilize a series of gates to regulate information flow in a data sequence. The forget, input, and output gate service filters and function as separate neural networks within the LSTM network. They govern the process of how information is brought into the network, stored, and eventually released. The first stage in architecture is forget gate. In this stage, the LSTM neural network will determine which elements of the cell state are relevant based on the previous hidden state and the new input data. The previous hidden state and the new input data are input into a cell that outputs a vector where each element is a value between 0 and 1, achieved using a sigmoid activation function. This network within the forget gate is trained to produce a value close to 0 for information that is deemed irrelevant, and close to 1 for relevant information. The elements of this vector can be thought of as filters that allow more information as the value gets closer to 1. These output values are then multiplied element-wise with the previous cell state. This results in the irrelevant parts of the cell state being downweighted by a factor close to 0, reducing their influence on subsequent steps. In the next stage, the input gate and the new memory network are used to determine which new information from the current input data should be stored in the network's long-term memory. This decision is made based on the previous hidden state and the current input data. Both the input gate and the new memory network are individual neural networks in themselves that receive the same inputs, namely the previous hidden state and the current input data. It's important to note that these inputs are the same inputs that are provided to the forget gate. The input gate is a neural network that uses the sigmoid activation function and serves as a filter to identify the valuable components of the new memory vector. It outputs a vector of values in the range from 0 to 1 as a result of the sigmoid activation, enabling it to function as a filter through pointwise multiplication. Similar to the forget gate, a low output value from the input gate means that the corresponding element of the cell state should not be updated. The new memory network is a neural network that uses the tan activation function and has been trained to create a new memory update vector by combining the previous hidden state and the current input data. This vector carries information from the input data and considers the context provided by the previous hidden state. The new memory update vector specifies how much each component of the long-term memory should be adjusted based on the latest data. The tan activation function is used because its values lie in the range of. This ability to produce negative values is essential in reducing the influence of a component in the cell state. The new memory vector created in this step doesn't determine whether the new input data is worth remembering. That's why an input gate is also required. The final result of the combination of the new memory update and the input gate filter is used to update the cell state, which is the long-term memory of the LSTM network. The output of the new memory update is regulated by the input gate filter through pointwise multiplication, meaning that only the relevant components of the new memory update are added to the cell state. The updated cell state represents the updated long-term memory of the network. In the final stage of an LSTM, 
The new hidden state is determined using the newly updated cell state, previous hidden state, and new input data. The output gate performs this decision-making process. This gate is used to determine the final hidden state of the LSTM network. This stage uses the updated cell state, previous hidden state, and new input data as inputs. Simply outputting the updated cell state alone would result in too much information being disclosed, so a filter, the output gate, is used. The output gate is a sigmoid-activated network that acts as a filter and decides which elements of the updated cell state are relevant and should be output as the new hidden state. The inputs to the output gate are the same as the previous hidden state and new data, and the activation used is sigmoid to produce outputs in the range from 0 to 1. The updated cell state is then passed through a tan activation to limit its values between minus 1 and 1 before being multiplied pointwise by the output of the output gate network to generate the final new hidden state. There are a number of advantages that LSTMs have over traditional RNNs. First, they are much better at handling long-term dependencies. This is due to their ability to remember information for extended periods of time. Second, LSTMs are much less susceptible to the vanishing gradient problem. This is because they use a different kind of activation function, known as an LSTM cell, which helps to preserve information over long sequences. Finally, LSTMs are very efficient at modeling complex sequential data. This is because they can learn high-level representations that capture the structure of the data.